Are you struggling with combat in Zero Siever, having a hard time surviving raids? Well today I'm going to be teaching you how to make combat in Zero Siever insanely easy and boost your survival rate by 50%. Zero Siever has a fun, engaging combat system that is both very fast and very lethal. One wrong move could lead to death at any moment. This means that you must keep a high level of awareness at all times in raid. Audio cues like footsteps and gunshots are obvious tells of an enemy's presence. But something some players may not be aware of are the crows, wolves, and ghouls that can be found in raid. Crows will land on and pick at dead bodies, but will fly away and avoid bodies that another entity is around. When this happens, you can hear their feathers rustling as they take flight, meaning a potential enemy is around. Wolves will also reveal potential enemies since they attack most mobs in their territory. When a friendly or enemy NPC enters their territory, they will howl as a warning before attacking. You can use this to your advantage by either avoiding the area altogether or clearing it out with the information advantage you have. Ghouls will also make an audible screech when aggro to a foe, and will charge them down letting you know the general location of another NPC. Other than audio, visual cues are instrumental in surviving raids in Zero Siever. Human NPCs will tend to have a headlamp on in most non-100% light conditions, which can give away their position. Dead bodies can also serve as a warning, since whatever killed them may still be around. If you come across bodies without crows near them, then they were either killed recently, or someone or something recently disturbed them. In both cases, it is prudent for the player to be on guard as something not so friendly could be nearby. Another tool you should be using to maintain awareness is the extended aim or scope feature. This is right click by default and gives you a larger view in the direction you are aiming. This gives you a huge advantage over NPCs as you can see them before they can see you and outrange them as well. This next topic is vital to any player in Zero Siever, good movement. Having good movement is crucial to not only surviving but winning enemy encounters in this game. This is especially true once you come across enemies with high levels of armor that you can't one or two shot. But what is good movement in Zero Siever? To me, good movement is movement that efficiently gets you to your objective in the safest manner possible, with the lowest likelihood of being hit. This means that you try not to stand still as much as possible, especially in gunfights. Bullets in Zero Siever have a projectile travel time, which means you can dodge enemy shots as well as bait them to waste ammo. You can jiggle peek a corner, get info on where the enemies are positioned, and then either reposition if there's too many or re-peek with your crosshair already aimed on them, making shooting them easier. Practicing good movement in Zero Siever will make combat a no-brainer, but you can't forget about good positioning. Positioning in Zero Siever is very important, especially in the early game. This is because you don't have strong armor and can't take many shots before dying. Sometimes, firing as soon as you see an enemy is not the best course of action. There may be patrols out of view that can ambush you when you open up on their allies, resulting in unnecessary damage or death. Before engaging an enemy patrol or camp, think to yourself, how many enemies do you see? How many enemies can be there? Do you have good cover that protects from flanks? And finally, do you have a good escape route in case things go south? Getting in the habit of being more methodical in Zero Siever is crucial to success, but my next topic is the key to fully taming the brutal combat system within this deep and complex game. Now, before I cover this huge topic, I'd like to ask you to like and subscribe if this guide helped you, so that not only can you see more useful and entertaining content, but so can others. It really does mean a lot and makes the hours of planning, filming, and editing worth it. Now, the biggest thing that can make combat so much easier is understanding how your equipment, namely weapons, ammo, and armor, works, and how to optimize your kit to do the job you want it to do. This will become even more important when the hardcore mode is added, since death may mean loss of gear. In Zero Siever, armors have several performance modifiers that dictate how well the armor will perform against different things like radiation and anomalies. While they each are important in their own way, we are going to be focusing on durability, class, and fragility. Class is the armor class, which can range from 1 to 6, with 1 being the worst protection and 6 being the best. This can stop or reduce the damage of incoming bullets. Durability is the overall health slash condition of the armor. The less durability, the less effective the armor is at stopping bullets and reducing damage. Fragility determines how quickly incoming damage reduces an armor's durability, with higher fragility reducing durability faster. These stats work in tandem to protect against different ammunition types found in Zero Siever. It is best practice to use the armor with highest class available, as once you start having more successful raids from following the points in this guide, the cost to repair your armor becomes minimal. Ammo in Zero Siever have different characteristics that affect performance against different armors and enemy types. The main thing to know is the penetration value. When a bullet hits a character wearing armor, the armor's class and durability values are put against the penetration value of the bullet fired. Every 10 points of penetration an ammo has equates to the ability to reliably pen one full class value of an armor. So an 
ammo with a penetration value of 32 can reliably pierce an armor with a class rating of 3, but will struggle with a class 4 armor. To get through a class 4 armor reliably, the ammo would need a pen value of 40 or higher. This means that using the ammo with the highest pen available to you is almost always the best choice, since you want to have the highest chance to penetrate enemy NPCs armors. Yes, they do do less DPS to unarmored NPCs like mutants and animals, but using a couple extra bullets to kill them is worth being able to kill hunters and the like without having to bullet hose them. I would advise most players to build the ammo producer as their second or third module, as having a reliable stockpile of ammunition is a great boost to your combat readiness. Weapon stats are another key tool to make the combat in Zero Seaver less brutal. Building a reliable weapon that makes cutting through the horde of enemy NPCs a lot easier allows the player to worry about other aspects of combat and the raid in general. The stats that go into this are durability, accuracy, recoil, and ergonomics. Accuracy is the spread of the weapon, which cones out while firing. Accuracy is determined by this bar and this number. The longer the bar and smaller the number, the more accurate the weapon. Recoil is how much your crosshair moves while firing. The lower this number is, the better. Ergonomics is the delay between moving your mouse to a position and your crosshair or scope moving to that position. The higher the value, the better. These attributes are determined by the attachment used on the weapon, with some attachments being better than others. You can find attachment boxes on all maps, with some hotspots being the weapon store in the mall and the police station in the forest. The most important weapon stat, however, is durability. The durability of a weapon affects the weapon's accuracy, damage, and the chance for the weapon to jam, with lower values affecting the weapon more negatively. It is vital to get in the habit of maintaining your weapon with repair kits or the workshop module to ensure a good durability when going into raid. It is the worst feeling to die with a bag full of loot because your 30 durability weapon jams during a key moment in a firefight. Two or three weapon repair kits should last you until you build a workshop, which I recommend to be the very first module built every run. That's it guys, my guide to making the difficult combat in Zero Seaver a little less difficult. Did this help you? Did I miss anything? Or do you disagree with something I said? Let me know down in the comments. I'm very excited for the difficulty updates coming next patch. Hopefully hardcore gets added and we see a new meta emerge with budget kits and other similar features. Okay, see ya.